But how do you uh, plan to keep uh, going on with this momentum, to keep going forward, and make sure that newcomers can join the party? Because there's a lot of great teams out there that, I don't know, for a newcomer, maybe like too scary to try to enter a tournament or something, because I mean, these guys are awesome and fantastically talented. How do you make sure this keeps going up and make sure new people can join? Um, so I guess from the development perspective, um, you know, my focus is to continue working with the team to, to improve the game. And so, you know, like I mentioned previously, we're continuing to add content to the game at a cadence that we actually haven't hit in the past. And so we're actually releasing stuff to start back to faster than we ever have been compared to previously. Um, so, you know, Patch 36, like I mentioned earlier, is an example of that with, you know, a new call commander, Elrac, um, new co-op map, Missed Opportunities, which we just announced on our website last week. Um, we have custom mutators coming to co-op mode, which has been an incredibly popular mode since StarCraft 2 came out. Um, and so we're, we're continuing to see a lot of um, passion from the community around that particular mode. And, you know, we're, we're really passionate, you know, enthusiastic about continuing to support it. Um, so, so that's that's really exciting, and you know that patch is dropping next week, um, so players should be able to get their hands on that really soon. And then, you know, looking forward for patch um, for future patches later in, later in the year, we talked a little bit at Gamescom about the new collection that we've been working on, um, and that's a new a new section in the user interface of StarCraft 2 that centralizes all of the earnable content that you you can get inside StarCraft 2. We've integrated. Um, a new feature that you know the community has been asking for for a long time, the announcer packs, um, which we're really, really looking forward to get into players' hands as soon as possible. Um, we've also been working on additional features. You know, we just released the ladder revamp um, a month, a little over a month ago. Um, we're continuing to support that feature. Um, but the team has been hard at work on, uh, and also another feature that has been up, up very often requested by the community, which is the separate MMR for race. Um, so that should be coming. Uh, soon later in the year as well. So, um, from a development perspective, we're we're still fully committed to, you know, to creating new features for the game, servicing different sort of slices of the player population. Whether they're they're single player, you know, fans, um, they like playing co-op, they're interested in the competitive mode, um, and you know, the collection which I touched on, which is the you know the, the new announcer packs coming, that um, that should cater to everyone. Uh, and add that um, expanding, you know, the, the, the idea of the, the players that are new to the game, you know, we still want to reach them. We're still, uh, we're still looking at ways that the game can do that. We're also finding a ways that, um, looking at ways to expand how people can learn to play the game or learn about the game through social media, streaming videos, uh, pairing people up. Um, you know, Co-op mode is a great way to bring for new people to be able to get into the game and play. Um, because you can get some support, you can play with a pro on your side, uh, where in the past you could only just get beat by the pro, now you can have a pro helping you win in a, in a better way, um, uh, managing your troops when you can. So there's just some, there's a lot of things that we can do there that we're just going to continue to do, and going back to what I said earlier about having a full development team on this game, all those different ideas are still in, you know, uh, if you don't see them yet, there's a good chance they're in the works. Uh, there's a lot of things that we're, we're going to be able to do uh, in the future that, that, that look at this game because we really love this game um, and believe in it and, and we're fully dedicated to it. Thanks. But how do you uh, plan to keep uh, going on with this momentum, to keep going forward and make sure that newcomers can join the party because there's a lot of great teams out there that, I don't know, for a newcomer maybe like too scary to try to enter a tournament or something because I mean, these guys are awesome and fantastically talented. How do you make sure this keeps going up and make sure new people can join? Um, so I guess from the development perspective, um, you know, my focus is to continue working with the team to, to improve the game. And so, you know, like I mentioned previously, we're continuing to add content to the game at a cadence that we actually haven't 
hit in the past. And so we're actually releasing stuff to start to faster than we ever have been compared to previously. Um, so, you know, Cache 36, like I mentioned earlier, is an example of that with, you know, a new call commander, LRAC, um, new co-op map, missed opportunities, which we just announced on our website last week. Um, we have custom mutators coming to co-op mode, which has been an incredibly popular mode since StarCraft 2 came out. Um, and so we're, we're continuing to see a lot of um, passion from the community around that particular mode. And, you know, we're, we're really passionate, you know, enthusiastic about continuing to support it. Um, so, so that's that's really exciting, and you know that patch is dropping next week, um, so players should be able to get their hands on that really soon. And then, you know, looking forward for patch um, for future patches later in, later in the year, we talked a little bit at Gamescom about the new collection that we've been working on, um, and that's a new a new section in the user interface of StarCraft Two that centralizes all of the earnable content that you you can get inside StarCraft Two. We've integrated. Um, a new feature that you know the community has been asking for for a long time, the announcer packs, um, which we're really, really looking forward to get into players' hands as soon as possible. Um, we've also been working on additional features. You know, we just released the ladder revamp um, a month, a little over a month ago. Um, we're continuing to support that feature. Um, but the team has been hard at work on, uh, and also another feature that has been up. Uh, the Latin American players competing to be able to play in this tournament. Um, are playing right now, so we'll get to see who uh, who rises to the top. It's going to be a great day for that. Uh, so uh, a lot of really really great things. Um, StarCraft, as you all know, is the the grandfather of the esports scene, and uh, we've got a full team dedicated to that game today. Still, we haven't stopped. Um, you're seeing all the new Nova uh, visions and other new content coming. There's a whole lot more in store for you in the future. So if you love StarCraft and StarCraft II, uh, stick around. Thanks, Steve, and thanks for the intro, Javier. Uh, hi, I'm Rodney Singh. I'm a senior game producer on StarCraft II. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been at Blizzard um, for a while, since 2005. I've been working on StarCraft II since 2010. Um, I currently work with the engineering team on the StarCraft 2 team, and we work primarily on the uh, UI, uh, online systems, social features of the game. Um, so things like, you know, the, the UI revamp that came out, Legacy of the Void, uh, the ladder revamp that just came out a few months ago, um, those are the things that um, you know, my team work on. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to be here for this tournament um, in Mexico City, really enjoying my time here, uh, and excited to see some awesome StarCraft 2 competition this weekend. Muchas gracias Rodney y Steve, eh, vamos a proceder ahora a la breve ronda de preguntas y respuestas, eh, si tienen preguntas por favor levanten la mano. Hi, I'm Roy from Players Inc. Um, yo quisiera saber, digo, tienen una experiencia pues, ya bastante amplia ¿no? en el sentido de, de eSports, pero últimamente está creciendo muchísimo, muchísimo más. Entonces me gustaría saber qué experiencia han adquirido de los nuevos eSports o de la nueva escena que Esports has grown so much lately, and uh, he knows that Blizzard has a lot of experience with that. But he wants to know what you guys have learned, or what Blizzard has learned from the new esports scene, and how it has evolved recently. Have you learned anything? Have we haven't forgotten anything to to prove ourselves? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the esports scene is constantly evolving. Um, if you look at, you know, the state of StarCraft tournaments today, the quality of the production. Um, the level of competition, um, it's, it just keeps getting better. And, uh, you know, we continue learning from events that have, been, you know, been going on over the years and incorporating those improvements into tournaments. And so um, it's, we're, we're really, you know, supportive of the esports scene and we continue to, to, to you know, learn and grow from it. I think you're, you're all the way through to Void and now they know the missions. There's still a, a full dedicated team, so there's a lot of new ideas that you haven't seen yet. There's a lot of new thoughts on where that game is going. Um, and uh, certainly our, our aim is to give more players uh, around the world, and especially here in Latin America, more access to our games. Um, and StarCraft II is one of those games that we want to continue to, to look at ways to improve access and uh, uh, improve uh, the, the, the ability for people to 
to watch uh, streams of the games, watch these events, and participate. One other thing I would add also is that if you look at um, what the team has done since Legacy of the Void came out, we've been on a monthly patch cadence um, pretty much ever since Legacy of the Void came out last November. And so we've been constantly adding uh, you know, co-op commanders into the, the popular co-op mode. We've been adding new co-op maps. Um, we released the, the Nova Covered Ops mission packs. Uh, you know, we also continue to add features to the co-op modes, such as Mutators and Mastery. Um, just last month, we released the ladder revamp. And so, like, as, as Steve said, you know, we continue to have a full development team around uh, StarCraft II, and you know, we, continue, we intend to continue supporting it fully. All right, thank you. And regarding the, the, the release of Legacy of the Void, you know, this was the last expansion as we know it, and you released the map packs, right? So, in, re regarding the development of the competitive scene, how is the content for the competitive going to be released? You know, eSports, StarCraft eSports is always evolving with the expansions. Now that, that they are gone, how is it going to grow? You know, new, new units, new mechanics? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're continuing to try to keep you know, the multiplayer scene alive and strong. And as you saw, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we announced the, the new slate of large balance changes that, that David Kim talked about at DreamHack Montreal. Um, there's a new balance test map for that that's live in the game right now that players can go on and try. Um, and just shortly here, the team has just put the finishing touches on patch 3.6, which is coming up next week. And you're going to see the new uh, matchmaker for the new balance changes as well added to that. And so um, it'll be easier than ever to find a match in order to test, test out the new balance changes. Um, and of course, you know, the more people that play the matchmaker, the better the match quality is. So I encourage everyone to go out and, and try out the changes. Um, so yeah, we, we continue to you know, look at ways that we can improve the multiplayer experience of StarCraft II. Um, and the balance changes that we're testing out right now are, are an example of that. Thank you. Atomics. Uh, hello, my name is Ernesto from uh, Atomics, and well, my question is simple. How do you expect that this event could improve the, the fan base of StarCraft in Latin America? Uh, I, 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 I believe that um, just bringing more excitement to the down here, the fact that it's the first international event that we've done uh, for any of our franchises, this is the first time uh, we've done that. Uh, the, the StarCraft scene has always been really strong in Latin America. Kind of, we're out indexing other places around the world, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, there's there, there's a lot of love and interest in StarCraft from all the way back to the original StarCraft to to the uh, the the, the, uh, the three part release of StarCraft II. But now all the new mission packs. I think. You're looking at uh, more and more content, more and more exposure. So I think an event like this helps us get uh, more people to see it. This is a game that's beautiful to watch. Uh, unlike some of the other games that are have a good esports following, they, this game still looks amazing. Like you really understand the different uh, uh, troops and, and what's happening on the scene. I mean, if you don't really understand the game, so for us, it's uh, just getting more people to be able to see what how this game can be played, the, the sheer talent of our pros and how, how great they are at, at micro and macro. It's very visual and easy to follow. Uh, I think it's just a great, uh, it continues to be a great game to highlight uh, what esports can be. Perfecto. Eh, players que están para participar en la Copa Intercontinental. Y bueno, ya luego de presentarlos, eh, comenzamos con una muy breve sesión de preguntas y respuestas. Nuevamente, durante el evento, al final del evento, vamos a tener la oportunidad de platicar un poquito más con ellos. ¿Vale? Sí. Hola, bienvenidos y muchas gracias. Este, me gustaría presentar a los jugadores para que sepan cuáles son sus nombres y de qué país vienen. Este, podemos empezar por Has, que es de Taiwán. Xi'an, que que es de China, Hydra, que es de Corea, pero viviendo en Estados Unidos actualmente, este, Iagus, que es de Australia, Scarlet, de Canadá, este, tenemos a Snoot, 
este, tenemos a tenemos a Showtime y que es de Alemania y tenemos a NIF de Estados Unidos ahora los dejo con Javier para que puedan preguntarles I think a lot of it has to do with um, like the community and everyone's and everything and when there's so many negative comments all the time I think that's one of the main reasons that make it hard also I think um, while a lot of people don't like female tournaments I think it can like having small ones is a good way to get women into playing tournaments competitively because like that's that's how I got it I played a couple in like 2011 before I played any like big lands and that's part of the reason why I'm playing these tournaments now thank you hi guys how come you're not practicing right now <laughs> did you already have your practice session anyone You have a train for today? I think we're doing it off of this. Oh, All right, so, so we are in a hurry so you can get your practice. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. Eh, bueno, mi pregunta es un poco personal, ¿no? Si, si ustedes se dedican básicamente a los videojuegos, es como, como otra rama de, de poder darle énfasis ¿no? a la a la parte de, de, de darle promoción a un juego en específico, eh, me, me gustaría saber cómo es que ustedes deciden dedicarse a esto. O sea, si es un poco, voy a practicar porque quiero ser bueno en ello, o simplemente me doy cuenta de que soy bueno y pues, me voy a dedicar a esto. Ok, Rodrigo wants to know that how is it that you decided to, you know, to get into esports, and if it was of a matter of, like, I'm good at this, I'm gonna practice to become a pro player, or it's like, I'm gonna practice so I can be good and become a pro player. Like, how does it go for you? And you can, like, take turns, uh, the ones who wants to answer this question. Um, we're just gonna start one end. <laughs> we're gonna start. I guess, I guess. <laughs> it's easier. Um, well, I just, okay. <laughs> Well, I just started off playing, I used to play a lot of games and then I slowly became good at it. I was never intending to enter esports, but once I saw you could win a lot of money in tournaments, I became interested as the 15 year old I was. And then I just slowly got into it. It wasn't like I planned it, it just kind of happened. For me, it was pretty much the same. Like, I never really intended to become a pro gamer or it wasn't like, really a dream of me or anything. Just like, was done with school and I liked StarCraft and I played a lot and I kind of got into it this way. Uh, I just played StarCraft because I didn't really have anything else to do, so... <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of games and I got into some ways with these. For fun and then got good. From that I never really intended to be a pro. Yeah, uh, same here as well. Um, I guess I get, uh, got into the competitive scene thanks to uh, national tournaments uh, and qualifying for international events that way. So, so after I won some national tournaments, then I was introduced to the international scene and uh, traveling was a lot of fun. So I just kept on playing and uh, the more I discovered tournaments, the more reason I had to practice and play more. Um. <clears throat> Uh, similar to these people, but uh, I think there was, like a, there was a little part of me that always wanted to just play video games all day, and as soon as I found out you could do it as a job, yeah, that's probably what led to me playing StarCraft too much. Just, just hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there was a big esports boom, esports boom in Korea. They uh, 15 years ago, so I got into sports naturally, and I decided to play StarCraft as a professional. For the children, the the really new players who want to be like yours, or you admire, or they are really good in art. So, what do you think? I think it's they've been performing very well, and uh, Mage has already been top eight, I think, in some tournaments. So. It's definitely possible for Mexico to have a champion in StarCraft 2. And for advice to newer players, it's really just you have to put a lot of time into it. Because personally, even though I was playing for three years, I still was not that good. And it's very frustrating all the time. 
and the only thing is really just have to keep playing, have to be very determined, and just can't give up. Yeah, I think for uh, for newer players, it's very important to uh, get in touch with the uh, players from your local community and play in uh, regional competitions as much as possible. For example, in Mexico, there could be uh, Mexican tournaments or qualifiers. Um, so I think it's important to just play in whatever competitions that you can play in, both uh, offline and online, and uh, that's a very good way for newer players to kind of get into the scene to actively search for competitions to play.